Hey, beautiful, sensitive souls. So welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Barry. And if this is your first time, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can definitely get to um, know more about our videos whenever they're released. But this channel is really all about um, the esoteric science as well as vibrational cosmetics and vibrational medicine. So this particular um, video is going to be about the energetic body and the veritable fields, both in the esoteric understanding of it, which is the koshas and the chakras, as well as the more Western electromagnetic field understanding of the body. I would also recommend that you stay tuned until the end because I will announce a raffle in which you get to win a free ebook. So definitely stick around until the end, okay? So we'll start off with this particular map. And if you do not have a copy of this map yet, I would recommend that you go down into the description box and definitely click on the link that says B School of Life, join our tribe. It'll prompt you how you can download an article that has this map with an explanation as well. So it would be easier if you come back to this video again to really understand it, to have the map in front of you. Now, um, we'll start off with this um, famous quote by Nikola Tesla. And he was definitely one of those scientists that I admired very much in my mystical <laughs> journey. And because um, I do believe he was a mystic himself. Uh, he said, if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, you have to do so in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. If you hold on to each word that he says, <laughs> energy, frequency, vibration, it takes you back to the esoteric understanding of the seven universal laws in, herma in hermeticism. Now, to learn more about hermer her hermeticism, I would recommend that you go check out my videos on the Kybalion. And I, it would go deeper into it. But just in a nutshell, I'm going to talk about the third principle or the third universal law, which is the law of vibration. Now, this entire talk that I'm going to give for the next 10, 15 minutes explaining this body map is going to be based on the third universal law of hermeticism. So that law states that everything moves and everything vibrates. From that particular understanding of the body comes, or I should say, from that particular understanding of every single life form on the universe, we come to the more esoteric understanding of the body in which there are, they're divided in the energy body has been understood in terms of chakras, koshas, and nadis and the Western understanding in which we talk about auric fields and electromagnetic energy and um, universal fields. So we'll, we'll get into the details of each of those fields, but imagine what Nikola Tesla said, and how does that really apply when we think about the living body or the human body? Starting off with the, the most microstructure, the smallest unit, of every life form is an atom. And the atom is made up of electrons, neutrons, protons. We all know this. But they're not just sitting there. They're constantly moving. There's a constant flow and a constant movement of these particles around each other. They're not sitting still. So the, and not only that, every time the electron changes or shifts its movement, it's either releasing energy or it's expending energy or needs energy to make the movement. So there's this constant flow and exchange of energy that's happening in this very unit of a structure. Now multiply that to the number of atoms in a cell, to the number of atom cells within an organism, to a, or an organ, and then from that to a, an entire being or an organism, plant, animal, or man. So we're really working with a lot of moving particles that are constantly either releasing energy or needing energy to do the work. So even all the biochemical and physiologic processes within the body are dependent on this constant movement. So the body is in a constant state of vibration, constant state of movement. 
Now that is a very important understanding because of course in medical school, we don't give a lot of importance to what is vibrating within the body. However, we take a lot of things for granted when we're thinking about tone and we're thinking about pressure and we're thinking about um, you know, parasympathetic tone and sympathetic tone. So a lot of it has to do with this constant movement that's happening in various different, um, you know, almost every single part of our living, of the living organism. Now, going to this map and switching gears, moving into the esoteric understanding of the subtle, the subtle body that lies within and without the organism. So we start off with the chakras. Now, the and I will stick to the Vedic esoteric side because I know there's an entire esoteric side of the Kabbalah, which I don't want to confuse, and I'm going to stick to this map. So I'm going to go to the Vedic understanding of the seven chakras. So there is an entire um, set of videos that I've done on each of the chakras. I would encourage you to look at that. However, briefly kind of breaking it down, there are seven main chakras seven main energy centers of the body understood in esoteric science or yogic science starting off with the muladhara chakra which is your root chakra that stays in your base that is gives out a red or a color it's a lot of times it's you know the chakra that's related to anger lust you know um, all physical needs of the body your second chakra is your seiko chakra usually depicted as a orange color, orange um, auric field. It related to more reproduction, um, a lot of emotions, creativity. It's related to um, your uh, kidneys as an organ. Then coming to your solar plexus, which is um, responsible for your digestion, yellow color. Your heart chakra, which is green. Your throat chakra, which is blue in color and your third eye, which is um, usually depicted purple, and the crown chakra is usually indicated as indigo or, or white in color. Each of these energy centers are considered to hold control over the neurohumoral and the endocrine systems within the organism, so within the body. So they're handling different endocrine systems. Each chakra is responsible to control the flow and the flux of each and um, the, the dependent endocrine system. So for the third eye, it's the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. For the throat, it's the thyroid, the thymus. The heart, it's definitely the heart organ. The um, lungs and all the secretions in that area, the solar plexus is sympathetic, parasympathetic control. You have the sacral, which is very much a reproductive organs, the sex organs, the hormones through the sex or the adrenal glands. And then you have your root chakra, which actually controls the tone of your, um, you know, the anal tone and the sphincter. And so, um, and it also controls mobility in the lower joints. So that is the understanding of, or, or the anatomy of the chakras. So right here in the map, you see from the bottom, each of the chakras are depicted going up. Now, I'm gonna talk about nadis, and nadis are considered to be um, channels of energy. So they're similar to transport systems, like you would think of the lymphatic transport system, the, um, the you know vascular transport system, this is an, a subtle energy transport system. And they're, they're considered to be hundreds of thousands of nadis within the body. However, there are three main transport um, systems that are given a lot of importance in Vedic um, uh, understanding. So especially when you think about Vedic medicine, which is like Ayurveda or um, Siddha medicine or even yogic science. You have the three main nadis which is um, this one here on the right, and then the left, which is the ingala and the pingala, and the center is the sushumna. So the ingala and pingala cross each other, almost like this, the two snakes, cross each other at each of the chakras going all the way up to the crown. And the, um, 
the Sushumna Nadi is in the center. The Sushumna Nadi is in the center. And it is responsible for taking what is called as the Kundalini energy. And I'll do a different video on the Kundalini energy. But it is responsible for taking the Kundalini energy from the base or the Muladhara Chakra to the crown. So it's the Ingla and Pingla around and the Kundalini energy that takes it to the crown. So this is the main um, energy centers that lie within the physical body. Now this energy centers are connected through the to the external world or the external multi-dimensional self through um, these nadis as well as forming sheets around the body which are called as koshas now there's the physical body emotional body energetic body mental body wisdom body and bliss body. So you start off with um, what is called as anamea kosha, which is your physical body. <clears throat> and then comes your um, pranamea kosha, which is like almost like your breath and emotions kind of working together. So if you're breathing too fast or you're breathing too slow or you're emotionally charged, so your emotions lie in that section. And then comes your energetic body which is pretty much like your, um, how far your chakras can kind of, your auric field, like where your auras, your chakra aura is kind of penetrating in that field. Then comes your mental body because your mental body is your thoughts, what you're carrying around you. It's like, you know, very similar to how I understand like the, the, in the last decade or so, we were talking so much about the microbiome and its skin gut brain connection. You know, I, I write a lot about the microbiome. So it's definitely a part of science that fascinates me because it is opening the understanding of the connectivity we hold to the environment that we're in and um, our own internal environment as well as the environment that is around us. So we have these sheets around the energetic body now um, or around the physical body um, the mental body is your thoughts the wisdom body is your intellect and the ananda maya kosha which is the bliss body ananda ananda like the anandamide molecule that's within the um, endocannabinoid system of the body the name ananda comes from the word bliss ananda means bliss so one can attain that release of anandamide when they are in a flow state or in a state of alignment with their source and with their soul's purpose. Now this is esoteric, but scientifically it can be understood as the release of the endocannabinoid molecule, the anandamide, causing this sense of bliss, so just like when you would take cannabis. So endocannabinoid is the cannabis within the body, which is the anandamide. And so the bliss body represents that anandamide activation within our body. So once your kundalini has been awakened and you have reached that space where it has, um, you know, you're, you're at a point where it's reached enlightenment, we are talking about a state of constant bliss, constant joy, because all these other sheets have been purified with the rise of the Kundalini, and you're in a state of complete Zen and bliss, and that is the Anandamaya Kosha. Now, this being the very esoteric side of it, and on this side of the map, so this is a map I actually um, you know, put together uh, based on not just the yogic texts and the yoga sutras, but also the Western proven scientific knowledge that we have of this multi-dimensional self of ours. And um, I get really excited when I talk about the scientific side because it, it maps or reflects so perfectly the esoteric side, okay? So here we have the scientific side and we have our auric fields. So we, you know, whether you're someone who does energy reading or energy healing or you're not, you're still, there are still um, devices that can be used to read aura. 
So we all know auric fields exist. Pretty much a reflection of the chakras from within create the auric fields on the outside. So that's the auric field, the different colors. Um, the morphologic field, T field, and L field. And I'll talk a little bit in detail about the T and L fields because, again, they represent very much the esoteric understanding of the Pranamaya Kosha and the um, uh, Manamaya Kosha, or the, uh, uh, the um, Manamaya Kosha, which is the emotional and energetic body, and your, you know, um, uh, the mental body. So we start off with the T field, which is called the thought field. So you're carrying a particular thought, and that thought triggers a particular emotion affecting your emotional body. That emotion causes a particular shift or dynamic within your body, generating energy to, for you to act in a particular way. So that's shifting the energy within the body. And that then is shifting the morphology because it's making you do something or it's making your blood pressure rise or it's increasing the sympathetic tone or it's making you breathe faster. So you see how these different fields are impacting your physical body. And, you know, I, of course, the esoteric have always, you know, given a lot of importance to man's role in this universe and the fact that he is influenced by the stars and the moon and the planets and the sun. And now we know that to be true, even scientifically, because here we have mapped the geofield as well as the universal light fields, which means that there have changes, there have, they have been able to detect changes within these energetic fields of the human body just by the changes or understanding the changes within the solar system or the changes within the universe that have created changes within the body. So when you think about the Schumann resonance, which is the electromagnetic waves from the earth to um, depending on where your sun sign is and moon sign is, and if you're a water sign or a fire sign, that's why I give a lot of importance to elements and in be mind, body, skin astrology is a big part of how we take care of um, someone's mind, body, skin. And uh, I definitely feel it should be an important part of healthcare um, to understand someone's um, constitution, not just physically, but also multidimensionally based on the elements because all of that plays an important role in understanding the, um, the overall impact that the environment has on the individual. So any form of healing, yes, there's a certain amount of um, self-development that is needed within the, in, within the doctor or the healer. Um, there needs to be an awakening within your chakras to be able to appreciate the auric fields and to be able to guide the healing so that you can understand where the blocks lie within these nadis and then help direct the flow of the energy. And I'll make more videos on those aspects as well. But um, this is, you know, this one, I just wanted to focus on this map so it's short and quick and you have an understanding of it. So I would definitely recommend that you download this map or um, at least the article that has the map. And you could do so by clicking on the link to the B-School of Light. It will prompt you how you can download the article. Also, um, I will be doing an Instagram Live. Um, I usually do them on Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. on my Instagram handle, KavitaBerryMD. So if you don't already follow me, definitely follow me there. And I would do an Instagram Live to do a Q&A on this video or any of my old videos. So if you have questions, that's the best time to answer, uh, you know, for me to answer them live. Also, um, I would, um, we're gonna talk about the raffle. So the raffle um, is a free copy of my ebook or my um, book, on the handbook on the tantric path, you know, engage, expand, explore, which is available on Amazon right now for $14, but I'm giving away a free ebook copy. Um, and to get that copy, I would like you to 
um, comment and affirmation, I am love and light. So if you can comment an affirmation for yourself, I am love and light in the comment section, definitely like the video, join the tribe so you can download the article and you will be entered to win a free ebook of um, the, the Tantric Path. And um, I would love to see you on live on Instagram to answer any other questions that you might have. And um, yeah, and let me know how you like this video. And if you have suggestions on any other videos, definitely let me know and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if it was uh, interesting to you. Thank you so much. And until next time.